Hi, everybody. Good morning. I hope the keynote was good. I was busy hiding so that I could give this talk, so I didn't get to hear it. But it's really awesome to see all of you here today. All right. I'm going to let people kind of trickle in in the back. But anyway, um, so hi. Um, Already a big introduction of me, so I don't have to talk too much about myself. I am a, a designer and a front-end developer. Um, I've partnered on a lot of enterprise projects, and I have also do a lot of design builds for smaller clients. So I've been working for myself since 2009, and I've kind of gone through a lot of the growth pains and excitement with WordPress. But I don't really want to talk about myself all that much. I actually want to learn more about all of you. So how many of you build themes? for you know, selling them or for clients, whatever. Um, how many of you like either work for yourself or like work for or run a small agency, like kind of a smaller, all right, so my people are here. Um, and how many of you, maybe you don't do those things, but you're thinking of doing those things, or like that's something that you want to do? All right, a couple of you. Well, welcome to the talk, thank you. Um, I want to learn about you because what we're doing here is we're kind of talking about um, how we navigate this new modern WordPress that's kind of happened to us in the last few years, right? And when I was thinking about that, when I was thinking about how to write this talk, uh, a concept that I was uh, reminded of was the hero's journey. Uh, how many of you are familiar with it? It's like a literary concept, right? Um, if you're not familiar with it, it's also known as the monomyth. Uh, it's basically kind of the most pervasive concept in storytelling. Um, we're a hero, uh, they have a disruption to their life, they face a bunch of challenges, and then they come out having been transformed. Um, so in the hero's journey, uh, there's several different versions of it, but the modern version is going through 12 stages of transformation in three acts. Um, the protagonist has to leave their ordinary world and go into the special world, which is the world of challenges and growth. And then when they return to the ordinary world, they have been changed. And so what I'm going to do today is take you on the hero's journey of transforming from you know, maybe a classic editor person or like a new person to doing WordPress themes, or maybe somebody who's been doing themes a long time, um, transforming into a full site editor developer. Um, I'm going to cover a whole lot in a short amount of time, so I'm not going to be teaching you how to do all of these things, but I do want to give you a framework uh, of how to tackle it from the beginning. So if that sounds good, I'd love to get started. We begin in the ordinary world, stage one, um, where we meet our hero. Uh, this is where we learn more about the protagonist, who in this case is us, the independent theme developer. We are the hero of this story. And who is the independent theme developer? Tell me if any of this sounds familiar. Um, probably came from kind of a diverse assortment of backgrounds. You might not have been a programmer originally. You maybe came into WordPress and decided theme building was kind of fun. Um, not necessarily a developer prior to WordPress. You probably also wear many hats, right? You know, because you're doing this on your own, or maybe you're running a very small team. Um, you're not just a developer. You might also be doing design. You might also be doing content strategy, providing support, consulting. Often, you need to worry about everything and how to get it all done. And you're probably, you know, not just doing a job, but you know, you probably have maybe like a family or some hobbies or other things that you want to be able to do. There's a lot going on on your plate. And also, the independent theme developer at this point has probably figured out a lot of how to make their, their business run, right? They have a lot of fine-tuned workflows. We've gone through a lot of stuff. We've built our suites of tools. We, we know the things we like to use. We know the, the themes or plugins we like to use. Maybe we use different custom field managers or we use different page builders. Um, we turn to some specific plugins and themes pretty frequently. We know where to look for things. We've read the documentation. Um, we kind of know all the languages we're writing in, right? You know, we're using HTML, CSS, PHP, some basic JavaScript. We're pretty comfortable in our world. You know, everything, everything makes sense. Things are working. But as you know, the hero's journey isn't just sitting and watching the hero sit in their house for 12 acts. Um, we have the call to adventure. And the call to adventure is when the hero's life is disrupted and they are called to take a journey. And in our case, um, this would be the merge of Gutenberg project into WordPress core. And then again, with the release of full site editing, these are kind of our big calls to adventure. Like things are changing, let's do it. And there are things that are exciting about this, right? Um, you know, as a service provider, 
for the client, it's pretty cool. You know, they get uh, a WYSIWYG interface. Um, they get to have these really great content tools that let them be able to write long form content, have more power to be able to do things without the developer having to build custom stuff. Um, and they're, the client's probably very excited because like it's a lot easier for them to understand what they're looking at. As a developer, it's also pretty cool. You know, I mean, there are, um, faster page builds, so like, I don't have to write custom code in order to add columns to a page, right? It's, a, it's all in there in the editor. Um, global styles are easier to take care of because they've introduced new tools that automatically generate them, and the theming framework of using a JSON file to just, you know, do all these things, it's a little more similar to how other languages do it. So as a, as a developer, there's some pretty exciting stuff. Um, so then we get this, you know, are we ready to begin this journey? Um, it seems like it's inevitable. It seems like it's the way going forward. But still, it's a pretty difficult choice for those of us that are used to our ordinary world. So the next stage is usually the, the refusal of the call. And that's where the hero is hesitant to begin the journey because they don't feel ready, or they don't feel qualified, or they don't want to leave their current life. There's a lot they like about it. And for us, there's a lot of reasons to be resistant to all of these changes, especially if we've been doing this for a while. I mean, as a service provider who has to deal with clients, some of the things that are kind of scary, um, the interface is not perfect yet. Um, it can be glitchy and buggy. Uh, there are features that are missing. I, I have my own feelings about some of the blocks, like the navigation block and how great they are. Um, great. <laughs> Some features like responsiveness or interaction isn't quite baked in the way we want. It kind of still feels like beta software a little bit. Things might break, things are gonna move around, and that means you know more support requests, which we don't really love. As a developer, a little scary also. Documentation hasn't quite caught up to the level that previous WordPress has had. Um, there's a whole bunch of new development tools and languages that we're looking at trying to learn. Functionality that we're used to having access to has been really obscured, um, and it feels like it's constantly changing. And it just doesn't feel as mature as what we're used to working with. But really the biggest fear, especially as a person who's independent or maybe running a small agency, is like, well, okay, I see that we have to learn all this stuff, but like, who's gonna help me do that, right? Like, I'm not getting paid to like, learn a whole new programming language, do all these new build tools, like keep up with everything. I'm just trying to like build websites for clients who need websites. Um, so in the next stage, we meet the mentor. This is usually, you know, the wizard or the great helper, the trainer, right? This is the, the person who enables the hero to get the knowledge and support they need to start their journey. And for you, maybe this talk is your catalyst, or maybe you've already seen some really good uh, tutorials and resources out there. I know for me, um, being a member of different social or Slack communities has been very, very helpful for having people to talk to. Also, attending talks like this or you know, watching various tutorials. I wanted to link to several resources here, developer.wordpress.org, learn.wordpress.org, fullsiteediting.com, and WordPress TV all have really great resources, and I, I show several specific ones as we go on. But another thing that we can do to kind of be our own support, especially when it comes to clients, is like try to manage expectations of what this looks like. So maybe can you sell update or maintenance packages to help cover the time and costs for all of these changes that are coming up? Can you outsource some of that to someone else? Um, how can you take on projects that maybe help you stretch your skills by being, you know, maybe 20% more than what you know, and then they can help kind of pay for that. Um, and also remembering that you don't have to do all of this all at once. I'll, re I'll reinforce that multiple times during this talk, but like at any of the steps on this journey, you can provide value. So again, we're posed with the same question, do you want to start the journey? And now with the support, we feel ready to get started, so here we go. In this stage, crossing the threshold, this is where the hero decides to take the journey, and with the support of their mentor, guide, and appropriate supplies, they embark. 
So for the theme developer, this is kind of your first foray into the block editor to see what the new paradigm is. So if you've been doing classic stuff or building with a page builder, this is the time to get your hands dirty in, in what this all is. And you want to approach this interface uh, with the curiosity and kind of the desire to learn as a power user. So we're not doing any development yet, we're just kind of learning like, okay, what is this thing that you're expecting me to build? So generally, you want to get you know, a fresh install with the latest core theme. You can use your favorite local development tool to do this, or you can use the, the WordPress playground, which will let you kind of spin up a, an instance of WordPress and go into it and look at all of the admin. And the first thing that we want to do is look at the post editor or the page editor itself and get really familiar with where everything is, especially, again, if you've been used to working more in classic WordPress or using a page builder, um, you kind of want to know where everything is in the interface. And you'll notice that many of the classic editor pieces are still there, like the content editor and the page settings. Uh, they just look a little bit different. There's also a whole bunch of new elements that have been added. So um, we have the block and pattern inserter, which you'll see as we go on. You've got kind of these different tools switching between editing and selecting mode and the undo and redo buttons. You have the, the document overview, which I'll talk about a little bit more. You have where your view and preview buttons are, so how you can see everything on the front end in different views. You have your settings, which, tend to, which live in the little, this is the thing that pops out, the sidebar that you can see right here. And then you have your screen options, where a whole bunch of other uh, menu items live. Uh, in addition to the page settings in the sidebar, um, the block editor adds a whole bunch of block settings, which show up in context when you have a block selected. Um, each block has a toolbar that either lives right above the block or docked in the top menu. That depends on your global settings. By default, they show up right above the block. Um, and many blocks also have a lot more complex options in the block settings sidebar. So this is an example for the cover block and what happens, uh, which settings you have. So you can see there's a few inline things that kind of show you what's the width of it, how can you move it, what are some of the cropping options, and then there's the, the sidebar settings are usually a lot more complicated. It's important to kind of study which settings tend to live in which spot, especially later if you decide to go down the route of building custom blocks yourself, then you'll kind of know where people are expecting to find things. Then we have the block pattern and media inserter, and all of these things have undergone a lot of changes, so this is as recent of a screenshot I got maybe last week because I wanted to make sure everything was like 6.3 compatible. Um, but this is where uh, all of your blocks and patterns and media live. And you can access this either through that little uh, inserter in the upper corner, or you can access it by kind of hovering where you want the block to go, or you can type the forward slash and start typing what block you want. So several ways of inserting blocks. Um, but this is where uh, people are gonna go to kind of insert all the blocks or patterns or media that they want to add. Then we also have the list and outline views. And I have found list view to be probably one of the best tools in navigating the editor if you haven't started using it. It gives you an entire nested view of every single block that's on your page. And now this is a really simple layout. There isn't a whole lot going on. But just imagine like groups with columns inside them with a bunch of things inside that. The list view lets you not only see those things, but also move them around from directly within the list view, copy them, delete them. Uh, it's really great. The outline view. Um, lets you kind of see things from a, a content writer's perspective. So it tells you, you know, what are the headings you have, what are the different things, how many words do you have, what's the reading time, et cetera. So those are all really useful tools. And then I also wanted to call out, because this is really useful as you're starting to learn um, how blocks and themes are written, um, inside the settings there is a place to toggle between your visual editor and your code editor, which we used to have in TinyMCE also. But this way, you can look at the markup of all of the blocks that are on your page, which is going to be really useful later when you start wanting to write themes or patterns or any of the other things. I also wanted to call out the concept of locking blocks. Um, you can access that through kind of the right-clicking menus, but um, this is a concept that prevents moving the block or removing them. And again, that will probably be useful later when setting up uh, themes or blocks for clients. But I wanted to call out where that lives. So next we move into the editor itself, and this is for full site editing specifically. Um, and this is kind of the latest version of it that's come out, and there's lots of things you can do here. So this is where you 
can view, edit, and create templates, view and edit styles, um, view, edit, and create patterns. And then also now we have uh, navigation and pages also show up here. That's brand new as of 6.3. The template editor lets you see every template that exists and also where it came from. So templates can come from the theme, they can come from a plugin, um, they can be custom built within the editor itself. Uh, and you can also, as you can see, add new templates that don't exist, uh, including custom templates that you can assign to an individual page or post which is kind of neat. Also want to bring up the concept of uh, synced and unsynced patterns. This is a brand new concept that just happened with 6.3 also. If you've watched block editor development over the years, you might have heard of the concept of reusable blocks. Um, that was a set of blocks that where you, if you updated the content, it would update across the entire site. Um, now those are called synced patterns and your template parts are called unsynced patterns and they all kind of live in this patterns section. So that's brand new, but that's where that lives. Then we also have the, the styles and variations. So these are all your global styles, right? So typography, color, layout, padding, and spacing. And also if the theme provides style variations where people can pick entire different sets of colors and entire different sets of typography, that's where that lives. And also that's where you can edit it and override what came in the theme. All right, so at the end of this stage, I kind of want to bring up these stats screens to talk about like benefits and obstacles where we're at here. So right now, we're kind of at mostly benefits and not that many obstacles. The main obstacle is time. You know, it takes a little while to go through all this stuff and get familiar with it. Um, but the benefits are great. You know, now you understand the interface. You'll be able to provide better training, be able to answer questions. Um, you'll kind of be able to know what does Core already have? What is it lacking? Um, and like what's available to you as a developer moving forward. So now we move into the next phase of our journey, which is the tests, allies, and enemies stage, which is where um, the hero goes through a bunch of challenges and forges partnerships in order to continue on their journey. And for us, this is where we start adapting our classic theme to support the block editor. So the most basic way you can do that is with traditional ad theme support. So this is changing almost nothing about your theme. We're just adding theme support um, and we're opting into several block editor features. So you don't have to do very much here except maybe change some CSS. Um, this is something you can do. I wouldn't recommend it being the thing that you do because the next thing that you can do is adding a theme.json file to your classic theme, which replaces most of what add theme support does and also adds a bunch of other things. Um, I do want to call out that the templates and template parts aren't really applicable to a not full site editing theme. So if you're just adding this to a standard PHP theme, you don't really need to use those. Uh, but we are gonna look a whole lot at the settings and styles because this is the way where you're gonna get a nice change. So in your theme.json settings, um, again, this is replacing add theme support and uh, this is kind of enabling or disabling different block editor features. Um, it enables you to set your presets like color spacing fonts and sizing that's gonna show up um, for the people that are making the content. It also gives you different block level controls of what things are gonna look like and it's also where you get your preset and custom variables. So I'll go through a little bit of that. Theme.json generates CSS variables. I'll show you a few examples of each of those things. Um, but what's really cool about what it's doing is it automatically loads these in both the editor and the front end. So if you're taking advantage of both of those things, um, what you see in the editor is what you're gonna see in the front end for the most part. Um, you do have to add your custom scripts and style sheets with NQBlock assets so that they show up, but um, it's really important if you're gonna do this to convert your CSS file to use as many of these variables as possible. And I know, especially if you're kind of used to writing CSS a traditional way, like putting stuff into a JSON file feels kind of hard and maybe a little gross, um, but it's actually really worth it, <laughs> right? No, I, I know, I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm writing for robots, this is, <laughs> um, but it does help in the long run. And actually, again, like I said, it's, it's more similar to how other non-WordPress theming frameworks declare styles. Um, so some of these variables are built into the settings and these are going to generate some CSS that starts with WP preset. Um, these are things like the palette um, and stuff like that. It's mostly like the palette and typography and stuff 
that governs those things. But you can also write as many custom variables as you want in the custom section, and they're going to output with a format of WP custom. Um, and I think making a whole bunch of these is great because uh, it means that later it's a easier to globally change your styles within the theme.json instead of having to go into your CSS and rewrite a bunch of things. And then uh, we, in the styles, we can set our default global styles and our default block styles. And what's neat about this is we can write absolute values or we can reference variables that we already made. So again, we're trying to keep everything inside this JSON file. And what is nice about that is, again, it is automatically outputting these to the front end as well as the editor. So we have access to them on both sides. There's a few tutorials here on converting classic themes to block themes. I uh, suggest that you take a look. And again, I, I'm going to have a link to all these slides afterwards. So you can just you know, grab that there. But I wanted to make sure you had this. So now here we are, benefits versus obstacles. Where are we at? Well, it's a little bit more change because, again, we are modifying a bunch of our CSS. We're using theme.json instead of add theme support. Um, but the benefits is that now, like, well, now the clients can use the block editor to write pages and posts. Um, and we can start providing some control to them through selecting pre-branded colors and typography and other different styling and controls so we can limit their options while still letting them have access to the block editor. But again, it does take some time to convert everything to using theme.json, so a little bit of change in time. OK, so we're here, and now we get to the ultimate test, approaching the innermost cave. The trials are starting to get harder. And here's where we're going to start doing block editor development, but not with JavaScript yet. <laughs> the first thing that I want to bring up here is block patterns, which I think are really great for um, being able to give your clients more, uh, more options. So Core already comes with several block patterns. You can take a look at what those are. Um, but basically what we're doing here is we're just kind of registering some block patterns. We're exporting the markup, which means we could build the pattern in the editor, go to that code view and copy it right into this, and we have patterns. Um, this is a pattern that adds three columns that have a heading, a subheading, and a link. That seems really common. So um, now my clients have that available, and I didn't have to do that much work. Another thing that we can start doing is adding custom block styles. So it's pretty simple to just register them, and then you're basically writing CSS. So a block style is basically a visual modification of a block that already exists. So this is an example of a group block that has a horizontal scroll on mobile. So instead of collapsing, you can scroll past the screen. This is just a variation on a group block, but it's still just a group block. You can also start building um, block templates and start incorporating block locking. So this is, again, something that's been really useful for clients. If I create a custom post type, I can pre-populate that custom post type with a whole bunch of blocks that are already on the screen, so they don't have to try to figure out which things to put on there. They just already have blocks. And I can also say, you can't remove these blocks. They stay here so that you don't mess it up, because the whole point is to make it easy for clients to update things. And again. We're already creating a whole lot of value for our clients, and we haven't had to touch any of the new stuff yet, really. So this is great. I also want to call out, if you're already using one of these tools, um, there is a, a couple companies that make um, custom block creators where you don't have to use JavaScript. You can you know, use their tool to, to uh, write PHP and create custom blocks. So I just want to call out that these things exist, and they've been really useful for a lot of people that are trying to make this transition. I personally have used ACF custom blocks before. Um, they can be somewhat slower than native blocks, but it's still really awesome um, to be able to add this value to your clients even when you're still at this part of your journey. So let's, let's look at the benefits and obstacles, right? So, so far, uh, we haven't changed much to the theme yet, right? You know, we've changed our CSS, but our theme's probably built pretty similar. We're just adding some stuff to it to make it better. Um, and what's really great about this is it can be as much or as little as you want, depending on what your client needs. So I spent a lot of time in this phase. Um, I've, I built a lot of themes that were doing exactly this stuff and um, making the, the block editor more useful for my clients. But you know we're getting here. This is the ordeal. This is kind of the climax of the movie, right? You know, fight the dragon. It's the hero's biggest challenge so far. And our biggest challenge is going to be uh, writing a full site editing compatible theme. So here we go. And the first thing we have to do here is like really learn block grammar. 
And block grammar is one of those things that exists and it's true and however you feel about it, it is what it is. Um, one thing to note is, you know, again, you'll learn a lot about this by exploring the code view of existing themes and existing content. Um, we have some that are self-closing, which means that they don't have content inside them, like WP search. We have some that do contain content, like WP paragraph, where you can see the paragraph is inside it. Um, and you can also see that you can pass different attributes to them. So they are written basically like JSON. Um, and those are the same kinds of settings that you would see if you were editing those settings in the sidebar in the editor. And this is, this is what it looks like to write blocks. Um, I'm not so, one of the bummers, I'm not really sure that any like IDEs or coding environments have support for this syntax yet, so unfortunately when you're writing it, it's gonna look gray like a comment because it thinks that it's a comment, but maybe that's something someone's gonna solve soon. If they do, please let me know, that would be great. Um, but this is, this is what you're gonna be doing, is you're gonna be doing a lot of block grammar. And you also have to learn a little bit of a different template structure. So it does still follow the same template hierarchy, so if you know that, you're, you're good, you're just writing HTML instead of PHP now. Um, you also, you put all your templates in a template folder, you put your parts, which are now patterns, in a parts folder, and you, you don't even need an index.php anymore, I believe, I think that, that changed. So you just need your, your index.html, your style.css, if you have any template parts, your theme.json, which we already have, and um, any functions or anything else. There's several resources on this. I, I can't teach you this here, I wish I could, um, but I, I love these resources for specifically talking about how to convert from a classic theme to a full site editing theme. I think that it would be really great to take a look at these. I do also want to mention, um, for people that are kind of moving into doing a full site editing theme, I converted mine. Um, it is still possible to use PHP templates within full site editing. This is a, an awesome article about how that works, but if you need to do something more complex and you're not quite ready to try to figure out how to write custom blocks to do all of it, there are ways to write PHP templates um, that are used within full site editing. You can't edit them in the editor, um, but you can still use them, and this is really great if you have to do a bunch of dynamic content or, or stuff like that. And there are, there are some workarounds necessary to how you write it. They're all listed in the article, and I'll let them do a better job of explaining it than me. But here we are, we're looking at our benefits and our obstacles. Now you can see the, the bars are really going up on, on what we have to do here, because this is a you know, complete rewrite from the ground up, right? Now, now we are kind of taking away our old theme and rebuilding it in this new paradigm. Um, it's a high level of time and investment to, to rebuild it or build a new theme. Um, it is a pretty big change from our previous development workflow because now we're writing this block grammar instead of PHP for the most part. Um, and there is some trial and error when the markup is wrong. You know, the fun thing of like opening up your editor and your editor is just a white screen instead of a useful error message is great. Um, but, and also again, like I called out in the code editors, like there isn't really any good syntax highlighting for block grammar yet. Although again, if someone wants to solve that, Please let me know, that sounds great. Um, but the benefit is like, you can actually fully take advantage of full site editing and make those tools available to your clients who would need them. So all right, now we've gotten to the reward. Like we are now full site editing developers. It's the light at the end of the tunnel. We are officially building things the new WordPress way. Yes, I saw a golf clap over there. Very, yes, good job everyone. We've made it this far. Um, but you might be thinking like, all right, you know, we fought the dragon, we've got our gold. Um, but there's still limits to what we can build and customize using the tools we've learned so far. Um, and that's when we realize that we have to take the long road back to the ordinary world. And there's more for the hero to face, and in our case, we need to face JavaScript. <laughs> Here we are. So a simple way to start that is, you know, earlier we talked about registering block styles with PHP. You can also register block styles with JavaScript. It does the same thing, um, but instead you're using JavaScript, but a good way to kind of start getting used to writing it. Uh, a very powerful tool that I've started using recently. So this is about the spot where I'm at in this journey, by the way, I'm here. Um, and I've started to write custom block variations. And block variations are a little bit different than block styles. Uh, block styles are a visual change to an existing block, and block variations are a little bit of a functional change to an existing block, which is neat. 
I've started using block variations to modify the query loop block so that uh, I can insert query loop block with uh, different pre-populated fields inside it or maybe ordered in a different way or maybe like using different parameters like I found a great article on how to order it by a meta field value rather than the, the built-in values which is something we would expect to do in a normal WP query but it's not in the query loop interface. Um, so I love block variations as a way to start using JavaScript a little bit more but still not going too much. But I do have to bring up, and this is, this is one of the hurdles, uh, especially if you haven't worked in JavaScript very much, is if you're going to start moving forward beyond this, you're going to have to get some build tools and, and start transpiling. Um, you can write everything in standard JavaScript, but most things are written in um, ES6 and JSX, and these are syntax extensions to JavaScript that browsers can't currently read. Uh, so that means that these need to be transpiled into regular JavaScript before they run. And that means you need build tools. Now, learning to set up and configure build tools is a whole talk in and of itself. It might even be multiple talks. And there are many tutorials for this. Uh, but I do just want to mention that WordPress has a WP script package that contains all the tools that you need to like build, watch, and lint for WordPress specifically. So that's really nice. Still, again, a little bit of a pain to get it all set up, especially if you're not used to working with build tools, but it is there. But once you start working in this transpiled JavaScript, um, you've got a lot of options, right? It's really cool. Uh, I just saw this uh, article that was about creating a, a custom UI for like inserting different things into the editor. Um, and I think it's a really great start uh, series. It's like a three-part series for um, getting started with the build process, how to set it up, and then converting that to new UI elements. So again, here we are, benefits and obstacles, right? What are the benefits? Well, now we can kind of create any UI control that we want, right? It's more seamlessly integrated. We're not, you know, just having like a bunch of styles on the side. We're having custom stuff. We have variations, which are very powerful. Um, but of course, there's some big obstacles, right? Uh, you have to start getting familiar with the command line. Uh, you have to be able to set up and install and troubleshoot build tools with all their secret rules that are only documented at the bottom of a Stack Overflow article somewhere. <laughs> uh, you have to learn about package and dependency management. And of course, if you haven't been writing JavaScript, you have to learn JavaScript syntax. And you have to learn JSX syntax and a whole bunch of other things. Um, once all this is set up, though, you can keep using it again and again. Like, you don't have to do it over and over. So uh, I think it is worth it. But uh, acknowledging this is a big change and a lot of time. So then we get to, you know, the final battle, right? Like, you think, you think the thing's over, but there's one last thing that the hero has to face. And they have to take everything they've learned to face their biggest challenge. And that one is building custom blocks. Here we go. Now, I do want to mention that it is possible to do everything else in this journey and never build a custom block. There are plenty of people that are building custom blocks. I bet a lot of things have been solved. Um, however, I know much like learning how to build custom themes or plugins in the first place, we, we probably found ourselves here because the things other people had already created didn't quite match our use case, right? Like they got 90% of the way there, but not quite. So I just want to talk a little bit about what the custom blocks are. Again, I'm not teaching you how to do this, but I want to make you aware there's a couple different kinds. So one is called static blocks, and these are most of the blocks that you're kind of interacting with in the editor. All the content and markup are created and saved to the post within the editor. So stuff like paragraphs, headings, groups, columns, images, media, et cetera, those are all static blocks. They often have a lot of style and setting options, and some can contain other blocks within them. Uh, the difference between static blocks and now dynamic blocks is that dynamic blocks content, um, they kind of display content from other parts of the site usually. So the query loop is a great example of a very complex dynamic block. Another example that they show here is the site title block where it displays the site title. Well, the site title is set somewhere else. So these blocks render their content differently. They often have server side functions associated with them. But they can still have like styles or other block settings within the editor that influence what they look like or how their content in is displayed. So again, there's a difference between static and dynamic blocks. And there are plenty of people that are talking about this if you want to go into more depth when you're ready for it. But just be aware that that difference exists. 
And again, your benefits and obstacles for, for building custom blocks, I mean, we've filled up all the bars in terms of change in time. Like, this is the biggest difference. This is the most time commitment. Um, the document, you know, we're, we're doing things that are new, so the documentation hasn't fully caught up yet, especially if you want to do something kind of your special snowflake exact thing that only does this bespoke thing your client needs. You know, harder to find documentation for that. Again, making sure all your build tools are working, package and dependency management, and then writing more React syntax. So now you have to start getting into like, I actually have to know this other language a little bit. But the benefits are huge because now you can do fully custom functionality, you can do a fully custom UI. I know we all saw the presentation with the NASA stuff, like all of that is just possible because we can do all of this stuff with, with custom blocks and custom building. So the last phase of the journey is the uh, return with the elixir, right? You've brought the prize home. And what that means for us isn't that now we have to build everything with full site editing and with custom blocks. What it means is that we have a larger suite of tools at our disposal. Um, and at this point, it's still OK if you build a classic editor theme. Um, these are good for managing things with like a lot of structured data or metadata uh, where people don't really need to change how it looks very much, right? It's totally okay if you do that. It's totally okay to build a hybrid theme, like where you're building a PHP theme but letting people interact with the, cl the, the classic editor. Like, we want to be able to take advantage of as much of that stuff as possible, but maybe it makes more sense to not have them be editing the header and footer, right? And it's also totally okay to build whatever custom unique solution with all of these tools that best fits your client's use case. It doesn't mean that you have to do it a specific way or not. So really the point I want to make is like, no matter where you're at on this journey, you're the hero. Um, you are providing value to your clients during each one of these steps. Um, and also these steps were presented in a specific order, but you might have to jump around and go back and visit steps and keep updating things. I'm personally still on this journey. Like I said, I'm kind of in step like nine and 10 right now. So I've only just started getting into building custom blocks. And maybe, maybe I don't go down that road. Maybe I love that road, who knows? But I'm still being able to provide value to my clients and solve their problems based on the things that I know. So anyway, um, this is my contact information. I know we'll have a little bit of time for questions, but I wanted to specifically point out that link at the bottom, the bit.ly 2023-wp-themes, that is where these slides are located. If you want to go back into them and check out all those tutorials, yes, take the pictures. <laughs> and I think that's it, I'm ready for questions. <laughs> So I think the way questions work is you can go up to the microphones or whatever, right? If you want to be brave. Don't be shy, she won't bite you. No. Or maybe it was perfect and you have zero questions and I've literally taught you everything. That's great. <laughs> yeah, hi. Um, I'm from Minneapolis, so good to see you. Uh, my agency, we use ACF blocks. We're building custom blocks. What would be a good, is there a good transition into full site editor that you would recommend? Okay, so the question, if, if you didn't hear it, was like, they're currently using ACF blocks, and you're asking like, what's a good transition to the full site editor? Well, um, I mean, I think you don't necessarily have to stop using ACF blocks to transition to the full site editor because they're blocks. So you can always like rework the theme around it and keep using ACF blocks if you want to. I, I'm probably not the right person to ask about like if you want to migrate from ACF blocks to building your own custom blocks. That is probably a person above my pay grade which there are many here, so that's very convenient that you have that question. Um, but I do think that like, if you're using stuff like ACF blocks and you want to convert your theme to using the site editor, there won't be a problem. Mm -hmm. So out of curiosity, which editor do you prefer to work in for me to build the syntax, syntax highlighting in? Okay, can you say that again, sorry. Which editor do you want the syntax highlighting for? VS Code? Uh, yes, I, I'm a VS Code person, so if you're, if you're Planning on solving that for me right now and everyone else, uh, that would be neat. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, thank you. Great presentation. 
Uh, have a question. Do you know a uh, good solution if you have two different roles uh, inside a company? One person should be able to fully edit website, like use a box and everything, and the other person is just a content manager, and they need only like to change the like, content, like uh, titles and text, and uh, how to limit their access, what they can change without like missing the blocks, like order all the colors and everything. Is it possible? Is it possible? So I believe it is possible. I haven't had to work on a project like that, but I think that some of the bigger projects like NASA have definitely had to do things like that where they've had to limit how people can interact with blocks on a role basis. So there are probably people here that have a good answer to that question, but again, I know that it's all pretty new. So I think. Okay. So there, there are apparently some plugins that let you get really granular with access privileges. I haven't used them, but it would be interesting to see how those integrate on like a block by block basis. I wonder if there's things that that integrate with like block locking from that perspective. So that might be fun to look into. But thanks for your question. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Can you describe your let's move the site around from different environments workflow. Because personally, that has been by far the hardest part for me just because of the nature of the interaction between the database and the theme that wasn't there before. Sure, so I'll, I'll expand on this for people that maybe don't know or haven't worked with full site editing. The super fun part about it is that um, when you're making theme changes in the editor, those all live in the database. And if you're used to being able to move things around via version control or maybe being able to deploy things between different environments, that can get kind of fun. Um, <laughs> so right, interesting, yes. Uh, so I guess some of the things I've been doing in order to do that is like exporting any of the stuff that I'm manually doing inside the editor out back to the theme and only deploying like the changed theme to production, which is also not that ideal because then if people are making changes to production, like how do we get those back onto it? Um, I haven't solved it. I haven't solved yeah. it. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's plugins for that too. Yeah. Which one? Oh, yes, well I did, yes, so create block theme, which I do think I mentioned in the presentation as a link, um, is a really useful way for exporting things that you've been doing either as a child theme or as its own new theme or rewriting the original theme. So yes, create block theme, I know I didn't call it out specifically, although I had it on the screen, um, is useful for kind of packaging up all of those changes, but again, it doesn't really solve the part about like stuff going production and back, but it, it does do it like one way, so hooray. Cool, thanks. Yep. I just wanted extra confirmation that it wasn't just me. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, we probably have time for like one, one more question. Yes. Hey, Michelle. Hi. Um, so content layout has been a need for developers for decades in WordPress, and I'd say a lot of developers are on a parallel track with different page builders like Beaver Builder, Elements, or Divi. So I wanted to ask, have you and your agency used any of those? And if so, what made you decide to move into full site editing and block editing? Sure, so the, the, the page builder question, always good. Um, so I personally didn't use page builders, I didn't think I was quite the right market for them. The way I feel about page builders, I think they're very useful, first of all, so I'm not anti-page builder. I think page builders are extremely useful for people who have very strong, detailed opinions about what they want their theme to look like, and they want a user interface to do that rather than putting that into code. And I think that's awesome, um, and that just wasn't me. I think that page builders still have a use in this case because there are still some more granular detailed opinions that probably won't ever be in the full site editing interface. And for those people, um, page builders are probably gonna still make a lot of sense. And all of them are very smart and they know what's happening with full site editing and they're gonna try to make that as seamless as possible. Um, I think full site editing is kind of in that really sweet spot in the middle where you don't wanna, you know, you don't wanna just have a bunch of fields but you don't need to give people like granular control over every single detail of every single element. And I think full site editing is kind of that sweet spot in the middle of that, especially 
maybe less so for the full site editing part of it where you're updating the header and footer, but definitely for the part of it where you're editing the content. Cool. Thanks. Are we, are we good, done? Okay. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>